How you guys doing? Welcome to today's lesson 45 under the PDT rule. If you yourself only have less than $25,000, which like 98% of Americans probably are under, which is chill, what do you do when it comes to trading? The reason is if you have under $25,000 in your fair brokerage account, you can only execute three day trades at every five day cycle. So you can have one on Monday, one on Wednesday, one on Friday, and then by Monday you have one more. It doesn't just reset. You have to make sure you have only in a five day cycle. This is important because if you break this rule, there's some consequences we'll discuss. And then how do you avoid it slash operate better? What we'll discuss today, our tips for the day are gonna be one, have multiple accounts, two, have a cash account, three, trade futures, four, do options, five, swing trade, which my favorite, six, better time your entries, and then seven, what do I use my day trades for? It's important to note that sometimes day trades should be saved for not just making money, but of course, risk management and saving you some money. With that being said, hopefully a quicker lesson than these last few, they're not supposed to be super long. And we're gonna get into it right now. With that being said, lesson 45, under the PDT rule, what would I do? Let's get into it. So what is it? When you're under $25,000 with a margin account, it's called the PDT rule. What this means is that you have only three day trades every single five day cycle. And if you use more, there's gonna be an issue. This started in 2001 due to the folks stopping YOLOing into day trades. Boy, if only back then they knew what today would be. That's crazy. And it's important to know what a day trade is. A day trade is a trade that you execute in the same day and sell out of in the same day. It could be three o'clock to 301 is a day trade from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. is a day trade. 3.58 p.m. to 4 p.m. it's a day trade. If the sun is up in the morning and the sun has not yet set and then come back up, it's considered a day trade. This is important to know because there are gonna be penalties if you break this rule. The first one being they may request you to fund your account to $25,000. They may say, you broken our rule. To avoid breaking the rule, we need 25K in this account. If you already had 25K, it would probably already be there. So if you can't do that, the next step is they're gonna freeze your account. It could be three, six, 10, 90 days, and they'll freeze your account's actions, not let you perform any kind of trading until the freeze is over, which in itself is probably super annoying, especially if you have a, if you have trades that you may not wanna have exited out. They could exit you out of your trades, freeze it, or even worse, freeze you within the trades. Not good stuff. And the third thing they do is suspensions and restrictions. Again, you sign up with your social security number, so if you're like, I'll just make a fake account, wrong they don't know who you are they can put a freeze restrictions or suspend you as a person on their app or their uh, brokerage account it can be again two months four months six months or they can say you cannot take any trades and they have trade the next day they can do a lot of crazy stuff beware of that so how do you avoid the pdt rule we have some great tips today to talk about let's make it quick not much charting just me talking at you in my dope tropical shirt even though it's winter baby a hey. Every day's, a pa every day's paradise for me. Let's get into it. The first is multiple brokerage accounts. This may be shocking to some people. The PET rule applies per, per brokerage, not per you as a person. You may find this shocking. Robinhood and Weeble are not gonna talk and be like, hey, did Evan use his PET rule? Yeah, he did. Make sure you can't do it. It's, it, it's not happening. They're not doing it, right? If you have multiple brokerages, you have one in TD Ameritrade, one in Fidelity, you have one in Weeble, one in Robinhood. This is great because then you have 12, 15, maybe even you know 18 day trades with six accounts. It gets you over these issues, right? What's also great is that if you do this, there's built-in risk management. If you have $10,000 for say, and you have five accounts, you give each $2,000, you blow up one account, you still, that's only 20% of your money. That's bad, that's real bad. But of course it's way better than having all your money in one spot. If having multiple brokerages builds in some form of risk management for you, then you're like, all right, this account's gonna be day trading, this one's swing trading, this one's long-term investments, this one's my uh, Roth IRA, all the different goals, you can manage that. It builds in some form of risk management. Of course, there is a the con of managing four accounts can be brutally hard for some folks, but again, that in itself is a great idea. So if you wanna get more day trades in, having multiple brokerages works, of course, can the laws change? Yes, but as of now, it's fine and legal. The second way around this is a cash account. Now a cash account doesn't have the PDT rule, which is a huge bonus. The downside is you need to let your cash settle. What this means is if I make a trade, I buy a stock, sell it the same day, those funds 
from buying and selling what I get back, my profit plus the original investment, takes two days to settle. So if I make a day trade on Thursday, that money will not be available until Monday. If I day trade on Monday, will not be, rigid, be available until Wednesday on most brokerages. This in itself is almost like a built-in, baked-in PDT rule. And if you YOLO all your money on Monday, you can't trade Tuesday and sometimes not even Wednesday until certain hours. So make sure you're being very careful of that. This is not a huge deal if you're smart. What I mean, again, if you have $10,000, for example, you have a cash account, you say, all right, Monday's budget's 3,000, Tuesday's budget's 3,000, and Wednesday's budget is 3,000. So it takes two days to settle, it could be Monday. Can't use that until maybe even Wednesday or even Thursday in some accounts. So if you, if you take all your money and partition into three different groups, you can say Monday's money's on Monday 3,000, that can be used on Thursday, Tuesday's 3,000 can then be used on a Friday, and then Wednesday's 3,000 can then be used on Monday, fully settled with no issue. Again, this is gonna help you with risk management and get over the rule in itself. It's easy, it's doable, but again, I'd always have some cash on hand for great opportunities. You don't want to get left out in the, the dark or get left out of the house where the saying is get left out because you yield all your money and then a great opportunity comes and you have none. This in itself helps you have cash on hand. The third is trading futures. This one, got to be careful because trading futures can be a great way to uh, lose all your money and a great way to make a bunch of money. Futures act differently, fundamentally and technically than a lot of different things. So do your research off the bat but they do not have PG rule with futures. You can buy soybean futures, corn futures, wheat futures, even some Forex trading uh, on some futures works very, very well. But again, the whole monster itself of trading futures is vastly different than stocks. Do your due diligence. If it works out well for you, great. But again, you must be careful, must have insulated risk uh, from futures in themselves. They act much differently. Fourth choice to avoid the PT rule is options. You can execute option trades on the same day and have that money later the same day or even the next day. What's great with options is the PT rule does not apply to us. The issue being options themselves inherently have more risk. So if you're going to be day trading spy options, this is a wild strategy that does work, but boy, you can lose all your money in the same day. So you got to be very careful about that. Again, for me, I would rather have 100 shares of like a $14 stock for like 1,400 bucks and sell cover calls on that. I would much rather do that unlimited compared to day trading like spy options. But again, if you're good at it, that's definitely an option that does not go under the PDT rule, which is pretty cool. But of course, the risk is there, you gotta be safe. Your fifth option and Papa's favorite here is the swing trade. If you were to buy in the morning and then sell the next morning, you're good. You buy at you know, three o'clock and sell at 8 a.m you're good. As long as the sun goes down and comes back up, you're good to go. So I think for me, swing trading makes the most sense. I like to have my day trades, and we'll talk about that in a minute, for different things, but swing trading in itself is inherently to me a better strategy for those who have nine to five jobs, low risk entries, right? You can hold overnight, even a day or two, and usually nothing bad is going to happen. So if you're going to be looking for high volume stocks, not going to work well. I went and wait for like a CEI months ago to run up or AMP to run up or like, you know, a NNOX, you know, big play runs up holding overnight because you can very easily get burned. But for your lower volume, lower slow moving stocks, swing trading is usually the best bet for this. The sixth thing you could do before we move on is going to be timing your entries. For me, buying at 3 to 3.30 p.m. is a way better idea, right? The markets have cooled off. Folks had their lunch, they come back from lunch, they do some orders, and they go home for the day. At 3.30, there's very low volume of volatility. Now, of course, if there's earnings or like fundamental news after the hour, after hours, you're screwed. Welcome. That's how this goes sometimes. But 9 out of 10 times at 3.30, you get entered. Tomorrow, on most brokerages, by the next day at 7.30 a.m., you can usually sell and not break the PAT rule. That's subject to your brokerage. I'm not a lawyer or a financial advisor, check, because there may be different rules, like maybe it says 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, it just depends. But for ones that I use, 7.30 to 8, you usually find, you know, exit out. That's only gonna hold, you know, 12 hours, not even, which is pretty cool. So that brings us to this conversation of what would I do with my day trades? If I have three in a rolling cycle, 
I want to hypothetically say Monday to Friday, I have three day trades. And of course, if you come to the next Monday, it doesn't.